Hello everyone, my name is Finding Pepper, and welcome to episode 1 of the Dungeon Crawler tutorial series. In this series, we'll be making a dungeon crawler, um, sort of similar to the Binding of Isaac. We're going to be using a tile-based system, because tile-based systems are great. So, let's begin. Of course, we'll start out by getting our assets. So, go to the link in the description to my tutorial assets project, find the sprite, um, I might name it something different, we'll see, and then we've got all our tile costumes here, open your backpack and drag the whole sprite into the backpack, and then head back over to your project. Alright, so we'll drag the sprite into the sprites pane, call it tiles. Now let's go over, in case you don't know, how tile based games work. So essentially we have a grid of tiles, a certain width and height. This example, the width is 5 and the height is 4. We have a list, which I'll call the grid list, to store each of the tiles in the grid. To store each of the tiles, we'll begin in the bottom left, and the bottom left tile will be in index 1 of the grid list. Then we move to the right, and that tile is index 2. And then to the right, and then that one will be 3. Then we keep going along the whole row until that's all numbered. Then when we get to the end of the row, we move up to the next row. And then the tile at the left of that row will be at index 6 in the grid list. And then 7, 8, 9, etc. And then we do that for the entire grid list. You'll see that the length of the grid list ends up being the grid width times the grid height. Now, we store each tile in the grid list based on its costume. In this example, the bottom left tile is the brick tile, which is costume 22. So, at item 1 in the grid list, there will be a 22. Now, the tile to the right of that, number 2, will also be a 22, etc. And we do this for the entire grid list. Alright, with that out of the way, let's begin coding. We'll create some new variables, grid width and grid height, both for all sprites. I'm going to name them with capital letters to indicate that they are for all sprites. Then I'll make a list grid for all sprites. Right now, our grid list is empty, so let us fill it with some tiles. Make a block called generate blank room. Nearly every block we create will be run without screen refresh, so if I don't say anything about it, just click the run without screen refresh check. We will repeat grid width times grid height, and we'll add, um, let's just add 4, 4 to grid. And when our flag is clicked, we can set grid width to 0, grid height to 0. If the length of our grid list is 0, that means we don't already have a room generated, then we will generate a blank room. Let's also make sure to delete all of grid before we generate our room, so we can ensure that our grid is exactly grid width times grid height length. So we want to set our grid width to 16 and our grid height to 12. Then when we click our flag, see we have a grid list of length 192 with a whole bunch of fours. We have our tiles stored, but we don't have a way of displaying them, so let's do that. Make a block and we'll call it stamp tiles. Run without screen refresh and as the name suggests, this will use the stamp block. So we'll add the pen extension. We want to know how big we want our tiles to be, so I'll create a variable called tile size and set this to 30 at the start of the game. Because our tiles are 16 by 16 and 30 is not an even multiple of 16, and because the stamp block is quite pixelated, um, our tiles won't be displayed perfectly, as in like our pixels won't all be exactly the same size, 
but if we want our tiles to align correctly within our screen, we need a size of 30. So anyway, we'll start by erasing everything. Now we're going to repeat grid height, so this will be each of the rows within this loop, and each of the rows we want to stamp um, all of the tiles in that row, so we'll need to repeat grid width inside of this repeat loop. So total, this will repeat grid height times grid width times, which is the full length of the grid. To go to the very bottom of the screen, we'll need to set Y block, and we'll set Y to 0 minus grid height times tile size, and we want to go down half of the height, not the full height, because we're starting from the middle of the screen, so we'll divide grid height by 2. So this will position the corner of the tile at this position, but we want the center to be at the position, so we need to have a tile size divided by 2, half of a tile, in here. So with a tile size of 30, this would add 15 to the Y position. Let's also not forget to set our size. Now we want to set our size based on the tile size variable. So we'll take tile size divided by 16, and we're using 16 because our tiles are 16 by 16. If you have differently sized tiles, you'll want to put in a different number. Now this will give us a decimal, and we want our size to be in a percent, if you will. So we're going to multiply this by 100. Because if we had a tile size of 16, 16 over 16 is 1. So we'd set size to 1, which is obviously way too small. So we want it to be 100. Just like we set Y, we're also going to set X. Now we're going to do it inside this repeat grin height loop. And that's because we want to start on the very left side, each row. So, we'll set x to tile size divided by 2, but we'll just replace grid height with grid width. Now, each time we loop, we're going to change x by tile size. And then, for each row, we'll change y by tile size. Now, we'll also want to stamp each tile. I'm going to the end of the win green flag click script of a forever loop to stamp tiles. Great, let's run this. So now we have a big wall of brown. Now if we select a different tile, you'll see it's just stamps whatever tile we have selected. We don't want that. We want it to stamp um, the tile that is at its index in the grid list. So we'll make a variable tile index for this sprite only, and notice I'm making it lowercase. And we'll start by setting tile index to 1. Each time we stamp, we're going to change tile index by 1. Now we're also going to switch costume to item tile index of grid. Great. So if we run this, we should see our tile 4 being displayed. If we show the grid list and change your value to something else, we will see that tile appears. Great. However, it's very difficult to edit a room if you have to go into the grid list and manually change each entry to the number you want. So, we'll create a sort of level editor. Let's just say we want to replace a tile with the brick tile if we click it. We can check that easily here within stamp tiles. Touching mouse pointer, and then inside we'll say if mouse down. Then we'll just replace tile index of grid with 22 which is the brick tile. So, let's try that. If we click the tile, we see they get replaced. 
of course we want to be able to place more tiles than just that. So let's make a variable brush for this sprite only. Instead of replacing it with 22, we'll replace it with brush. So for now, I'll just show brush um, and change it to a slider and set the minimum value to 2 and the maximum to 33, which is our final tile. So now we'll replace the tile with our brush. So you see 4 places more floor, floor tiles. If we do 22, place brick tiles. No 21 places brick tiles that have a uh, looks like a left edge. But still, it's a bit hard to pick our brush and it's a bit hard to see what tile we're going to place down. Sort of, you know, memorizing every tile, which is not something we want to have to do. So let's start by displaying our current brush. Let us stamp a ghostly version of our brush tile. So we'll set ghost effect to, say, 50. And switch costume to brush. Now we will stamp. Let's make sure to set ghost effect to zero before we stamp our normal tiles. So now we can see our tile that we're about to place down. Let's improve our system of choosing tiles. Well, if you've watched Griff Patch's tile scrolling platformer tutorial, you might know what's about to come. Um, we're going to make a list called Tile Key Map for this sprite only. And essentially we want to be able to press the number keys repeatedly in order to um, cycle through our tiles. Um, but we don't want all tiles to be bound to the same key. So I'm going to make our um, floor tiles bound to the one key and our brick tiles to the two. So let's add for each of our floor costumes a one in the tile key map list. Now for our bricks, we'll add a 2. And this represents the key we need to press to um, view these tiles. Let's say when the 1 key pressed, um, we'll make a block called next brush brush and give it an input key. Run with that screen refresh, and this will find our next brush of a given key. We're going to repeat through the whole length of the tile key map, but we actually probably will not end up going through the whole list. So each time we'll change brush by one and check F item brush of tile key map equals key. If it is, then we found a next tile and we'll stop the script. And if we don't, and if item brush of tile map is not equal to key, then we'll keep going and changing brush by one. But of course we are looping through the list, so if we get to the end, rather than keeping going, we'll switch back around to tile number two. And you also notice tile number. So, if brush is greater than than the length of tile key map, then we'll set brush back to one. Now you might notice that our first costume is called off-screen fix, and is blank. This is a fix for scrolling issues, but we aren't doing any scrolling. So, more it's just to help with if our grid width, grid height, and tile size are such that some of our tiles end up going off screen or partially off screen. So, it's probably not really necessary, but, you know, I thought it'd be nice to have. Alright, so, when our one key is pressed, we'll next brush one, 
Then when our two key is pressed, we will next brush two. Let's try this out. So we should press one. It will go to the next tile. One, one, one. And it will cycle back to two once we get to tile 17. Now if we press two, we should jump tile 18 and see the brick tiles. And then loop back. Great. We can hide our list and we can hide the brush variable. We don't need that anymore. There's one more thing I'd like to do, uh, and that's have an eyedropper tool. So if key I pressed, then we'll just set brush to item tile index of grid. So that just gets the tile under our cursor. So we have this brick tile selected. If we press I on top of this floor tile, we'll get that. Okay, great. So, this was a rather short episode, but hopefully you enjoyed it. Let me know what you think of the series, and if you would like to see more episodes. And if not, I can always make more Terrain Generation videos. I'm planning on not making any more Tile Scrolling Platformer expansion, because it's been like over a year now since Griff Patches posted any episodes on that series. And also, I would prefer to you know, make some of my own tutorials. So anyway, I hope you all have a great rest of your day. I will see you next time. Goodbye.